everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. This is the second time that I've recorded the chicken and garden update because the first time I may have accidentally turned off the audio recorder and then I went inside and I tried to fix it that way and no, it didn't work. So chickens are on the run. The chickens have got out. They're being very naughty because chickens and they have been enjoying some time out of the coop because well it's been dry this week we did have some some really horrible snow at the beginning of the week and i say horrible snow it was it's perfectly fine snow but it was that kind of just thinking about being snow not really powdery stuff it was really wet heavy stuff i'm just going to open this so the chickens can head back into their coop because they like to jump up rather than, you know, walk around because that's too boring, apparently. Anyway, <laughs> you can see the rest of the, you can see the rest of the snow over here and over here. Most of it, thankfully, has disappeared and the chickens have been, been enjoying that. They've been laying a decent amount of eggs. Um, you know, at this time of year, you don't expect chickens to lay a lot of eggs. They rely on sunlight to help them uh, actually make the eggs. And it looks like I've got another one that's been laid over here. So that's two eggs we've had today. We're averaging between two and three eggs, which isn't bad when you think that the weather's not been great. And look at this lovely, fresh egg. I feel very lucky that I have chickens of our own and that we are able to get fresh eggs every day because I was in the supermarket and I don't go to the supermarket very often but I was in the supermarket the other day and they now have a limit on the number of eggs you can buy because obviously we, we have uh, avian flu uh, luckily that they, they are not affecting our chickens here um, and I made the decision to not worry about it too much because Truth be told, the, the avian flu is, is more likely in areas where there's a large body of water and we haven't got a large body of water here. There's a large body of water about a mile and a half, two miles up the way, but you don't get water birds stopping here. The waterfowl just go straight for the water and they are the ones, as I understand it, who have been transmitting um, this avian flu. In terms of the garden, obviously everything has been generally struggling a little bit because of all of the cold and the snow. You can see my leeks have had it. Some of my herbs have had it. Some of them haven't. But I'm going to be digging a lot of this up. <laughs> it looks like some gophers have been in my bed. I'm going to be talking a lot about the gophers today because gophers have apparently gone wild. I can see there's lots of little holes everywhere. The little blighters, they are little blighters, are making holes in all of my flower beds and all of my vegetable plots and they're causing mayhem. They really are. One bed that hasn't been affected yet, thankfully, is this one. And my rosemary, as a consequence, is doing a lot better. I think one thing I may do this year to try and combat some of my issues with my gophers is to maybe take out some of the soil in my raised beds and then put like a screen underneath, like a, a wire mesh, and then they can't get in. The garlic is doing incredibly well. This is the first year that I have grown garlic and put it in the ground at exactly the right time. So the garlic is well ahead of where it was last year and gophers don't like garlic. So go figure. The chickens don't mind the garlic. They've managed to get in there a couple of times. They've managed to get into my strawberries. I don't know how many of these strawberries are going to survive. I guess I'll have to wait until the weather gets a bit warmer and then I'll know for sure. I know some of the strawberry plants have died and some are doing OK. So... We'll just have to wait and see. There are more holes here. It does look like someone's come along with a giant um, pokey thing and just made holes in the ground. It is the weirdest thing that I have seen in a long time. 
And boy, is it frustrating because it does mean that I can't really grow anything in the ground that is a root vegetable. Stuff that isn't a root vegetable, I'll take it or leave it. I'll try it. But anything that is, in fact, a root vegetable is in trouble. Looks like the chickens are going to need some water later. So I'll make sure that I, I get on that. Is everybody in here? It's not quite bedtime yet, but it's getting there. So I'm going to shut them up and hope that everybody is actually in here. I don't think there's anybody who shouldn't be. Who's who's out, who shouldn't be, sorry. Uh, but everything else is doing well. Charlie, what's, what's the matter? Are you in a grumpy mood? Charlie is feeling very grumpy. I'm not entirely sure why. Why are you feeling grumpy, Charlie? He's clearly upset because I've locked him in. Um, but you can't keep the coop open at night and it is getting late in the day. So sorry, Charlie. What are you going to do? He needs some fresh food and water in a bit. So I'll make sure he does that. And I'll put this up for the evening. And I also have to put in... have to put in the... Please don't sleep in here. So Carolyn, one of my older hens, has got it in her head that it's okay to sleep in the nest box. The problem is the nest boxes are where the hens go to lay eggs. And chickens, how do I put this in a nice way? Chickens poop while they sleep, right? That's why all birds do it, right? They, they automatically poop while they sleep. And it's why underneath a, a roost bar, whether it's a, a, a bird of prey or a, or a common or garden chicken, you'll find droppings. <coughs> and that's not very sanitary, you know, if they're pooing where they're going to be laying eggs. Not necessarily the, the, the smartest thing, and I'm not going to go into chicken biology. Suffice to say, if they are healthy birds, um, when they lay an egg, internally things hopefully should avoid contaminating the egg with any faeces. Sometimes that doesn't happen, um, but normally it does, and so your eggs are clean from poo. Uh, but you don't want the nest box to be full of poo because that also attracts things like flies and other stuff like that. Anyway, I didn't expect to be talking about poo in my video. As you can see, the bulbs are coming up. This are my first daffodil heads of the year. And I cannot wait to see those daffodils because this year, this winter has felt really cold and not very happy. Um things are broken so this is my greenhouse it's died and I wanted to build a new greenhouse as many of you know it was in our plans for next year or rather this year and I'm afraid I think we're gonna have to cancel those plans partly because we had such an expensive bill for the water pump it was over four four thousand dollars and that's going to cost us a lot of money. And we've also got this gopher problem that we're going to have to sort out. And if I keep walking this way, you can see how much of a problem the gophers are. So this is a box hedge that we have put up. The idea has always been that we would set up a box hedge along here and they would grow and give us a little bit of protection from the road and also stop people from just oogling into our house from the road. This box hedge has been doing really well, as has this one. This one here, less so because it's, it's been driven over multiple times by delivery drivers and people coming in and out. But you can see the gophers have been digging. I assume it's gophers, maybe it's moles have been digging tunnels all under everywhere. I mean, this this is stuff that came out of the ground. This is um, from, from the road. Yeah, it's kind of the base layer for when they were building the road. So it's literally just, it's everywhere. This box hedge is doing fine, but again, you can see this tunnel making its way all the way along. And then this one has died either because of gophers or just because of last summer, which was incredibly hot. This one has died because I think it was run over. 
And then this one at the end is holding on somehow for dear life. I think that this one and the one at the far end are going to need a little bit of help to survive. But it's my hope that I can either go and buy some new hedges, some new, um, some new boxwood. But honestly, this boxwood is, is pretty good. It's pretty strong and it should grow into a really lovely hedge. So I'm hoping that this one and this one make up for the others not being so good. So that is pretty much it from the garden. Our oh, rhubarb is doing great. I'll just move over and show you the, the rhubarb. And at some point soon, we're hopefully going to be, I nearly fell on my bum there because it's so muddy. At some point, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get a water roller. So it's like a, water, it's like a roller with, that you fill with water and you drag it behind a tractor. And one of you amazing people, I think, is going to be able to get us an electric tractor that we can use. So fingers crossed. Here's the rhubarb. I need to pull the weeds out, but other than that, look, it's doing ever so well. It's coming up. It's had enough. It wants the spring. I want the spring. And I'm sure you all do too. So there's going to be some planting soon. I've got some seeds that I'm hoping will help um, bring us into the, to the spring spirit because it's been a bit, it's been a bit dark and, and whatnot. I mean, it's coming up for fourth. 30 for 40 and it's already starting to look a little bit over overcast and a little bit dark the solar panels have basically given up for the day because of uh because of the big trees behind us we don't get a lot of solar power after about three or four in the afternoon so yeah <laughs> i'm looking forward to the spring and i like cold weather i like winter months it's just this winter has just been very wet we haven't had many kind of cool, crisp days. We've just had a lot of water and we needed it. But at the same point, it gets a bit old. Anyway, on that note, we are done with today's video. If you want to know more about the stuff that we're doing with the garden, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because we, we keep you updated fairly regularly. And of course, Erin and Kate also give you their updates from their chickens and gardens, or in Erin's case, her lizards and gardens, because Erin does not have chickens, although Kate does. If you want more from the main channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to that one too. And follow the links below to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to our Kofi, Bitcoin and Swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon. We have Mastodon server stuff, goodness for electric cars generally, and the news that we cover on the main channel. But if you want to follow us for more chickeny stuff, Kate and I both have personal Mastodon accounts, as does my Kate, the Kate I'm married to, as opposed to the Kate that I work with. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing Charged Up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Better Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Ascentar and Jim Vaness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our top tier supporters. They are Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Barrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. That is it for the chicken and garden updates. I'm going to go and put this egg away so I don't crush it and forget about it in my pocket of my hoodie. That has happened before several times. So until next time, as always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.